Today's webinar, we're going to be talking about how to be a supporter friend during COVID-19, uh, presented by Pierce for Progress. We're in the uh, Department of Health Behavior in the UNC Gillen School of Global Public Health, as well as the uh, UNC Mental Health Coalition. Uh, before we get started, uh, I just want to go over a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, so first of all, uh, today's workshop will be uh, recorded and shared on the uh, Pierce of Progress website, both the recorded video and uh, the slides alone. Uh, throughout today's, uh, and it's going to go very quickly, uh, but for throughout the entire um, webinar, we encourage attendees to interact uh, in the chat. Um, so if you'd like, please set your chat to send messages to all panelists and, uh, and attendees. Uh, but you can also direct comments to only the panelists if, if that's what you prefer. Uh, we have chat moderators uh, that will be uh, looking at that, highlighting comments and questions for the presenters. Uh, you can also use the question and answer um, button at the bottom of your toolbar uh, if you wanna um, just highlight your question for us to, to get to. Uh, so we'll, we'll get no notification for that as well. All right. So this is what uh, our next hour is gonna look like. We're just gonna go over some very quick introductions from the uh, presenters. Uh, then we're gonna go through some of uh, what we've seen as challenges that folks are facing um, in this crisis. And we're looking for uh, your thoughts on that as well. Uh, we'll share some of the good resources that we found um, on supporting others and uh, uh, Samantha, we'll, we'll talk to you more about that. And then we're going to spend uh, a, a good chunk of time talking about good strategies uh, for being a friend during COVID-19. And at the end, we'll have some time. And folks that want to um, stay uh, with us, we can talk more about next steps and, and what to do with all this information today. So I see we do have a a question here, are our microphones automatically muted? Uh, yes, all of the attendees have their microphones muted um, and uh, we're encouraging folks to uh, to interact uh, through, through the chat function. Um, and it looks like we have uh, quite a few attendees in here. So it will get um, kind of messy if we uh, have microphones on for, for everybody. So please uh, use the uh, chat features. All right, so uh, let's uh, get into introductions from the speakers today. Uh, we're gonna just let people uh, say their name, uh, where where they work, and then also one example of how they've been a um, supportive friend during the COVID-19 crisis. Yes, my name is Ed Fisher, and I'm a professor in the School of Public Health in the Department of Health Behavior, and. Uh, uh, have directed Peers for Progress for about 10 years. Um, and what I want to share about myself uh, regarding COVID is that I've taken to heart uh, Hannah Barker's suggestion uh, that we all build into our day uh, opportunities to reach out to people that we haven't talked to for a while. Um, and Hannah organized this webinar in good measure. And uh, so that's a good piece of advice that came up in the planning. Thanks, Ed. Uh, my name is Patrick Tang. I'm a uh, program manager at Pierce for Progress, also a MPH graduate from uh, Health Behavior class of 2012. Uh, one way I'm being a supportive friend, uh, I have a friend who is uh, at ho working from home um, with uh, two small children in the house, I think like a two and a half year old and a uh, under six month old. So um, he needs all the support he can get. So I'm, I'm on a, uh, a direct message text chain with him every day trying to keep his uh, spirits up. Samantha? Hi everyone, I'm Samantha Liu. I am on staff um, on the Pierce for Progress team at the School of Public Health. I um, am a two time Tar Heel alum and my way of being a supportive friend recently is that I've um, pulled together different people from both my master's and my undergraduate classes and had um, large Zoom calls of people that we haven't talked to in quite a while. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Emma Capanegro. I'm an undergraduate senior at UNC 
and I've been involved in various mental health initiatives, um, one of which is I lead the Mental Health Coalition. And one way that I've been a supportive friend has been doing a virtual yoga with some close friends in the mornings. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah. I'm a first year MPH student with a concentration of health behavior and I'm a research assistant with Peers for Progress, mainly looking at campus mental health. And I have been having Zoom study sessions with um, some <laughs> classmates, but you know, it's like half chat and half study, so. <laughs> <laughs> Good combination. And uh, now we want to hear from uh, all the folks that are here with us in the webinar. Um, if you're comfortable, uh, just uh, type out, I, I see the names of all the attendees, but if you're comfortable, let us know where you're from, uh, where your role is in the Chapel Hill community, um, and uh, that'll let us know uh, who, who, where we might look for you uh, later on. So I'll give you all a moment to just uh, share that info with us. Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, Hannah and Emma, uh, who will talk about challenges um, that we're seeing in the uh, community. I see the first chat come in. Um, well, to start off, we wanted to help ourselves prepare to be supportive friends, and part of doing that is identifying current challenges um, in this kind of unfamiliar time. Um, so as a team, we've talked about it and sort of come up with some categories that I'll go through here, but as I go through these, um, please think about um, things that I've missed or things that are particular to you and um, we'll discuss those in the next slide or so. So first is uh, fear and anxiety, which um, I think can range from general anxiety to you know fear specifically about the pandemic. Um, there's a lot of ways that this can manifest. And that kind of ties into sudden change and future uncertainties, um, reacting to changes in schedules and kind of constant influx of, of different information. Um, school stressors, which I think apply to a lot of us, can include, you know, changes in, in grading, changes to syllabi, and just dealing with a lot of incoming information to keep track of. I know I've talked to a lot of people about financial stressors, um, doctoral students wondering what's going to happen with grant funding, um, parents wondering what's going to happen with 401k and retirement funding. Um, personal stressors can really vary. Um, I know personally it has a lot to do with my family and my family's well-being, but also just again changes to your routine can cause all sorts of personal stressors. And a big one, an obvious one, is health concerns. Um, People are thinking, if they're feeling ill, do I have COVID-19? Um, is it something I should go get tested for? But there's also dealing with pre-existing condi conditions and getting the ongoing care that you are normally getting outside of um, the situation. And loneliness and feelings of isolation um, can come along with living alone right now, but it also can come with not having that face-to-face -face interaction that we're so used to um, and just not seeing those faces every day, um, smiling at each other, saying hi in the hall. So if we go to the next slide. There we go. Um, so I was hoping that we could hear from those who are attending. Um, we don't have all the answers and I think it's just helpful to understand ourselves and understand our friends to just hear from a variety of perspectives. I can obviously speak, speak to a grad student perspective, but that's just one perspective of many. So if anyone could um, look at these questions and type your thoughts in the chat, I'll go through them one by one, but feel free to answer any, any of the questions um, and open to panelists as well. 
The first one is what are some of the challenges being faced by students, faculty, or staff right now? Um, you could speak about your own experience or those of others. Um, I can say as a student, a lot of the school stressors are relevant to me. Um, as a grad student, there's a lot of group work and group work has been difficult to schedule um, over Zoom with everybody's changes in schedules. So I'll give that a couple seconds to see if anyone has thoughts in the chat. Uh, currently, no one has responded in, in the chat, but I can chime in and say that um, one challenge that I've faced is a lot of the work that I did uh, for pay was kind of under the table, more like tutoring and babysitting. Um, and so um, ki kind of trying to figure out other ways to um, make money or pull from savings during this time has been a challenge. Yeah. Absolutely. Another question to consider for participants are, what are some of the challenges we see or experience across our campus and community? Um, I know none of us are physically on campus, but we're now part of a virtual campus and we're also in a lot of different communities. I know that I'm in, I'm on the West Coast and there's a lot of tension in my community now, considering all the nature reserves and beaches are closed, but it'd be great to hear from people what their thoughts are on that. Nicholas had a great point. Uh, he said, I know that our LGBTQ community is feeling especially separated right now. A lot of us have unstable or questionable relationships with our families and being away from UNC has been especially stressful. Thanks so much for sharing. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, I know that a lot of student groups exist on campus, a lot of student groups that Emma's involved with, with the Mental Health Coalition, and I've actually been speaking to a lot of student groups this past semester, so that must be um, a unique experience of sort of being separated from your campus groups and informal and formal groups. Ed has shared uh, that for faculty facing requests to identify a backup for them uh, if they get sick and can't teach their classes. Right. Yeah. None, of, none of us want to think about those possibilities, but we, we need to, and especially those of us who are a few years older than our students. Definitely. That kind of touches on Number four, it's a sort of a unique stressor that you're experiencing. I've, since I've been on the West Coast, I think managing time, ch time change has um, been a unique issue for me. And if anyone has thoughts about how COVID-19 has affected your daily life or how you anticipate it affecting you long-term, We'd love to hear your thoughts. As a senior, uh, I think graduating in, in this kind of uncertain time um, with the poor economy has been a stressor for many of us. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Phoebe also shared, uh, furthermore, communities from underprivileged socioeconomic status are facing a great deal of challenges to have basic resources um, to continue their coursework at Carolina. Furthermore, Asian American communities have faced uprising racial disparities at their hometowns. Yeah, that's a really great point. Um, just kind of, yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Joanna shared that it's stressful to be in a primarily white collar world of academia, um, but come from a blue collar family, knowing the importance of staying home, the privilege of working from home, and the guilt and stress that comes from family and friends that have to go to work because this might be the last couple of work weeks and the uncertainty as more and more things shut down. Thank you for sharing. Um, Jordan shared 
adjusting to receiving care from a distance and telehealth is extremely stressful and difficult to adjust to with a chronic illness. Thanks so much. And I'll respond to your number four. I know uh, my partner's family um, is on another continent where they're on lockdown. And so it's really difficult for our nuclear family here to figure out a contingency plan for if one of his family members gets sick um, and he's not able to travel back and forth. And so what we're going to do, I think has been a stressor for our lives. And I think some other um, international uh, families that we've talked to are kind of struggling with similar things. Absolutely. Yeah. Phoebe shared, um, she, to clarify her comment, um, that um, kind of uprising racial disparities um, at their hometowns uh, is happening in North Carolina and across the U.S. And Raleigh shared, undocumented students and their families are especially vulnerable. They aren't eligible for government benefits, but are likely seeing reduced or non-existent work hours. Great point. Thank you, Raleigh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's difficult to navigate the benefits that exist, but there are groups that can't even have access to those basic benefits. And that's something to keep in mind as an extra challenge. Megan has shared um, trying to manage multiple roles at once, such as parenting and working from home ha has been especially challenging for me as well as being cut off from my in-person support network. Also a great point. Yeah, thank you, Megan. I know that I've enjoyed seeing some of my fellow students' kids kind of run on cam for Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cute, but I also understand that's a genuine challenge to getting work done and having having energy. Yeah, really appreciate all the input. In response to number three, I know um, because of the cancellation of my meal plan, I've been kind of learning how to cook for myself, <laughs> <laughs> um, which I actually have been enjoying, but um, what is a continual challenge. I think one of the uh, great unknowns about uh, self-isolation and lockdown is whether people are, will be in general eating healthier or worse. Um, because I think a lot of people are cooking at home um, and taking some more walks and things like that, but um, a lot of people might also be eating a lot of chips and bad snack foods. So, yeah, for for us health behavior folks, what you know, what the effect of this on people's eating and and uh, their habits will be really interesting. Yeah, that's that's a question mark. <laughs> I think <Yeah. laughs> it could definitely go either way and. That's sometimes a coping and sometimes sometimes it's an opportunity. <laughs> and Nicola shared that uh, we have personally went through eight boxes of cereal these last two weeks. <laughs> Relatable. Better, better than eight bags of chips. <laughs> <laughs> And we really appreciated all the input. I'll give a couple of seconds for any additional thoughts um, before wrapping up challenges. I think that it's a really great way to brainstorm among a group of people all the things that I haven't considered, that we haven't considered when talking to friends or even potential friends, colleagues, and acquaintances um, during this time. And it's also something that when you recognize these challenges, it's something you can share with other people. Um, and that's another thing to kind of reflect on throughout the process. I would just add that a big stressor is the uncertainty going forward. Uh, you know, each week we identify new things to worry about that we hadn't thought about the previous week. And mm -hmm. that's probably going to continue for at least a few more weeks. Um, so that uncertainty is really frightening at times. Yeah. 
Um, Raleigh answered in response to long-term outcomes, our world might become more virtual, which makes life easier in some regards, but also I really worry about having an even more isolated and disconnected world become the norm. Really great point. Yeah. And Nicholas has shared that RHA has an excellent Google Doc for potential activities that can be done remotely, such as multiplayer games, um, which I can request to be shared. That would be great, Nicholas. Uh, we, I know we would, we would love to see that. Yeah, you're already getting ahead of us, Nicholas. <laughs> you're doing our presentation for us. But um, so things to keep in mind for challenges. Um, everything is a bit unfamiliar and in flux at this time. And there's, for every person, there's a, a combination of challenges. And we probably overlap in those challenges with some people. And then in other ways, we have different challenges. So if you're reaching out uh, to a friend um, and you're trying to offer support, keeping these challenges in mind, we'll go into resources next. Um, also adding on Nicholas's resource um, that you can have in kind of your arsenal to give out to people um, or use yourself. Yeah. And Megan uh, shared that being inundated with bad news and a laser focus on the pandemic can make a day-to-day -day life task seem very pointless and can be overwhelming. I completely agree and I think that points to the importance of um, like supporting each other and, and finding ways, um, different ways to connect with others. Yeah. That's great. Um, so as Hannah said, we're going to move into just some resources that I wanted to make sure that we got to you all. Um, there's a lot on here. Don't worry, this webinar will be shared and we'll share these slides. So, um, or you can screenshot if you want. Um, just want to make sure that we're sharing accurate um, and up-to-date information, whether uh, you're looking for a U.S. audience or international. We've got the CDC and WHO. Um, and also state health departments are really helpful um, for your local area, whether you're in North Carolina like me or you're in California like Hannah. Um, check your local um, state health department for uh, updates on any policies or changes. Um, and then on the bottom, we've got UNC related resources since we are talking to faculty, staff, and students tonight. Um, I've got on the top just the uh, university splash page, but then under that is um, UNC Human Resources, which has um, resources for anyone who's employed at the university, uh, faculty, um, staff, and student employees can refer to that. And then under that, we've got some health resources. Um, I want to highlight, Emma brought up a really good point during our planning that CAPS 24-7 is still open and um, they're available by phone. And then CAPS appointments are also switching um, to virtual as, they, as um, they come in. And then under that, we've got some resources for online learning from the UNC Learning Center that they've compiled for you. I know I'm having a hard time <laughs> switching to work from home. Um, so I've taken some of these ideas myself um, and applied them to my uh, working life. And then also on the bottom, um, there's some opportunities for service if you want to get involved. Um, I know we heard uh, Nicholas chime in with the resource. If you all have another informational resource, please include that. Send it in the chat. Um, I've also got some tangible assistance resources. I think it was Raleigh who brought that up earlier, thinking about um, families who might be relying on assistance at this time. Um, and there are changing guidelines for that. But some things that might be useful for you all include the Carolina Student Impact Fund, um, mutual aid organizations. There are a lot of different um, aid organizations that are popping up, uh, organized often by neighborhood or town. This website here offers um, some links to different mutual aid groups um, that might be specific to your locality. And then on the right-hand side on the top, is a Google Doc of crowdsource resources and ways that you can get involved um, in the triangle here, but also nationally. And then the bottom um, are open to anyone. So make sure uh, you share this widely, um, whether they are affiliated with UNC or not. Um, there's resource navigation with 211 available nationally. Just dial 211 and they'll connect you to someone who can help you navigate whether you need um, housing resources or transportation resources um, or anything in between. And then there's healthcare, of course. Um, there are a lot of people who are losing their jobs and thus their healthcare. Um, and that's a qualifying event. So healthcare.gov um, is where you would enroll in a um, 
uh, marketplace plan. And then on the bottom is a resource for NC navigators. And those are people who can help you through the enrollment process. Um, it is uh, really, really difficult to navigate at times. So I highly recommend that you um, contact a navigator or help someone get connected to them. And then of course there's unemployment. Um, I've linked the North Carolina resource for that, but definitely check your um, local state. And so again, inviting you to please in the chat, put in some more um, resources pertaining to that. And then I'm just gonna finish out um, kind of my last content slide here with some ideas um, to get you thinking. Um, I like to think about what kind of strengths each individual brings to a table. And so um, whatever you're studying or whatever you're interested in a hobby outside of your professional and academic life, think about what those things are and how you might be able to share those with your friends and your community. Um, so the first example I put was public health. And so I think about trying to share um, accurate information with my friends and community. Um, if your expertise is in something else, then I'd love to hear how you may have been leveraging that um, amongst your friends. And then the second column there is uh, kind of getting us started to think about social distancing. Um, I think it was also Raleigh again, one of the last comments that Emma made about our world moving um, onto virtual platforms and thinking about how we can combat social isolation, I think is a really great kind of segue into what we'll be talking about next. But as you do that, be thinking about two things, um, ways that you can connect both synchronously and asynchronously. So that's um, getting people to respond in real time, like a phone call or um, getting them on a video chat, but also asynchronous, like getting um, forums or places where people can talk to each other, but they don't have to respond immediately. So now um, I've got Pat moderating the chat for us or monitor, monitoring it for me. Um, so I'd like to hear from you all what other ideas um, you have. I know earlier I shared uh, that I'm pulling together <laughs> some friends and alumni uh, into uh, large Zoom calls. Um, I also played a Pictionary game with my brother and his friends and then also had Zoom on the other side of my computer. And so we were playing this game and trying to guess, but at the same time being able to verbally talk to each other as if we were sitting around like a table playing a regular game. We have a couple of responses coming in here. Uh, I Ching says uh, virtual dinners for friends and family gatherings. Neat. I think um, when we spoke with Ed's social support course, there was a student who said that um, <laughs> they take, uh, everyone has to take an ingredient from their pantry. Um, and it's kind of uh, like that cooking TV show where everyone has to come up with a recipe for that one item, like canned tomatoes or something, and then share it with everyone that evening. I thought that was really cool. Some other ones coming in. So a lot of ideas for, um, for supportive activities. Uh, the UNC uh, LGBTQ Center is trying to organize virtual book clubs. So that's great. That's, that's that point you were making on the previous slide. That's from Nicholas. Uh, Raleigh writes, uh, writing letters, a great, br nice break from being on one screen or another <laughs> all day. <laughs> yes. Related to that is moving chairs. <laughs> Switching up your scenery. Zoom happy hours. It's from Megan. Uh, Phoebe writes, uh, these are very fundamental ideas, but self-quarantine is very important and using masks, since all ind individuals are at risk, uh, regardless of current health status, is, is very important. Yeah, so I think, I think that point about, um, you know, using your, your um, existing skills um, and using things that you know and you're good at, um, you know, if, if that's something that you know you can communicate very well, um, and you uh, are maybe a trusted source of science information like that, um, really important to emphasize those things to your social circles. Uh, Jordan writes uh, taking a dance exercise class via Instagram Live. Cool. 
Jordan, if you have any recommended uh, Instagram handles for that, please share. Yeah, I'll share that um, I did a live class from uh, Core Power on YouTube today. And I have a friend who's a Pilates instructor and she um, just on her own accord made a Zoom link and sent it out to people and scheduled a, a live Pilates class for her and any friends who wanted to join. So just another cool. way that people are using their skills. So that's really interesting that uh, it, it seems like it, during the uh, lockdown that people are maybe more interested than before in participating in, in live activities versus maybe in the past when things were, you know, you're trying to fit exercise into a busier schedule, you would go maybe to a recording uh, or, um, you know, some uh, some YouTuber uh, and and follow that in your own time, but the importance of having a live interaction uh, maybe is a really appealing quality to to some of these activities. Uh, we have a question here from Andrew: Is wearing a mask advised? Ooh, good question. Um, I think up here, so. In the U.S., what I've read so far is that the CDC is not recommending mask wearing unless you uh, believe that you have symptoms. Um, I think I checked that last night. Um, however, uh, there are definitely places around the world where it's more culturally um, acceptable and expected for everyone to wear a mask. Um, and that is their way of preventative measures because they can do so on a wide scale. Um, in the U.S., our situation is different because we definitely um, have lower stocks of those, um, those uh, protective products like masks and gloves, um, and our healthcare workers really need it. So I think the jury is out as far as recommended policy from the CDC. Um, and so I think right now we're in that squishy space where they, I'm sure that those policymakers are trying to figure out what the recommend, what recommendation they should make now that in the U.S. there is so much more um, wide transmission. And I think we can all agree that you can never go wrong with hand sanitizer and washing your hands and not touching your face as much as possible. Yes, definitely. Cool. Well, thank you all for um, giving us your responses and um, Thank you, Pat, for, for reading those out for us. Um, if you have any other ideas, like I said, um, or resources, we will be kind of trying to compile everything and share it online alongside the recorded webinar. So um, please keep those coming if you have them as we go on. I'm going to pass it off to Ed next, though, for our uh, last session. So um, that those are all really good observations and suggestions and resources. I want to talk a little bit now about specific ways that you can talk to or interact with uh, others, your family, your friends, uh, and uh, try to be supportive and perhaps more even important than being supportive is just connecting. Uh, please continue to make suggestions in the chat as we go along and Pat is going to be uh, following uh, your chat suggestions as I as I talk and he'll interrupt me especially if there are some that are uh, pertinent to things that we're saying. Um, so first of all for starters you just got to be kind to yourself and take care of yourself. Um, it almost goes without saying but doesn't um, that uh, healthy eating, exercise, and I think in this these days, especially getting sleep is really important. Um, uh, your immune system uh, does a whole lot better when you've uh, gotten good sleep. Uh, so being careful to yourself. Samantha uh, has taught me a, a phrase that, um, I don't remember whether it's a teacup or a coffee pot, uh, but you can't pour tea into a cup with an empty pot. And so if you've, run yourself down, you're not going to be able to share much with others. And along those lines, number two here, a key message uh, for yourself as well as others is just giving yourself some slack. 
we've all got to let each other know that uh, we understand that we're not able to bring as much energy and as much concentration to our activities as we usually do. We're all working with a lot of stress in the background. And even if we're not aware of it, it's gonna influence how much we're able to uh, bring energy to our daily activities. Um, in terms of uh, reaching out, uh, think about whom you haven't heard from or who may be struggling. Um, I just realized yesterday a couple of friends of mine who I know live alone uh, and don't have family and I'm making it a point to get back in touch with them uh, over the next day or so because they're probably really uh, have it, having some, some problems here. Uh, and be bold or don't be bashful. You know, usually we're, don't just call somebody and say, how you're doing, I'm concerned about you out of the blue. But in these days where everybody is feeling stressed and has reason to, to feel frightened, um, people are happy to get calls, get text mails from people they haven't heard from for a while just expressing interest in them. Ask about people's families and loved ones. We all are going to be uh, concerned about our families and loved ones, older parents, uh, young, young parents. Uh, and uh, so ask about uh, the families and loved ones of the people you, you're in contact with. And along those lines, number six here, don't, don't be bashful about talking about whether somebody's ill or if you know that somebody's father has a history of diabetes or recently went some, through some complicated cancer treatment, they're at risk and feel free to ask them, how's your dad doing? Um, I'm concerned about him. Um, and uh, check in with those who are sick. If you know people who are sick, uh, contact them. Don't be bashful. Uh, they're going to be happy to hear from you. Um, Pat, any any chat comments that are especially pertinent to, to those ideas? Yeah, Chris uh, writes that uh, suggesting making an extra effort to touch base with uh, grandparents and older people who uh, may not be so good with technology and, and being more isolated uh, than, than other groups. Yeah, I, I know my, my niece uh, taught her grandparents how to use Zoom and uh, really now they're, they're into it and very proud of it. Uh, Megan writes, uh, we should uh, remember to reach out to healthcare workers and other essential workers we know uh, who have different struggles than what we do right now. Yeah. Yeah, the healthcare workers are really feeling it. Okay, Samantha, let's go to the next slide. Um, so uh, I sort of mentioned this at the outset. Uh, this was Hannah's suggestion uh, to prioritize reaching out, make it part of your daily or weekly routine. Don't treat it as something that's just on the side. Treat it as part of your job every day, if you will. Uh, a number, another one here is to, to pay it forward. Um, uh, if you talk to somebody and they are saying how much they appreciate your having gotten in touch with them, say, yeah, well, why don't you think of somebody that you can call that you haven't talked to for a while? Uh, so encourage everybody to be active in this. I think it's really remarkable um, uh, how many people are getting together with old classmates, current classmates, family members, etc., cetera, um, in, uh, in Zoom chats and other other modes. Um, an important one here is that you don't have to have all the answers. Uh, you can even call others to see if they have answers to your questions. Uh, the person who was asking earlier about whether or not to wear masks, that's a good basis for a phone call to a friend. Uh, what do you think about this? Um, the point is not to have all the answers. The point is to connect and to make all of us feel that we have folks that we can turn to that care about us um, and that we all have each other's backs. 
um, share your own experiences so it's others feel comfortable sharing theirs. I know with my students and with others this week, I've been sharing the fact that I just don't have as much energy as I usually do to do all the things I'd like to be doing. And, uh, you know, that, that's a little bit, uh, uh, makes me feel a little vulnerable that I'm admitting that. But what I find is that everybody's feeling the same way and people uh, are appreciative of uh, folks opening up. Uh, so, you know, talk about your own experiences. There's always one risk in talking about your own experiences and that, that's that you uh, make sure to give others the room to talk to. Sometimes we can get too uh, caught up in talking about ourselves and forget that there's another person in the conversation. Um, as always, ask open-ended questions. How you do and what's happening? Uh, how did you feel about that? What are you frightened about? Uh, all good open-ended questions. And perhaps most important and most underrated is that small gestures can mean a lot. Uh, we tend to think in, <clears throat> in terms of being supportive to each other, of having long heart-to-heart -heart conversations, but just a voicemail, just a text message, um, if you don't have a chance to connect uh, in real time, uh, that can mean a lot to people. And it can especially mean a lot to someone who's feeling isolated, who's feeling lonely, who's feeling down. Uh, so uh, don't be, uh, feel that you have to devote three hours a day to keeping up with a few people. Uh, you can do it through small, small gestures. Um, Pat, any comments that are especially pertinent to those ideas? Uh just to adding on to your last point about small gestures, um, and you know, for folks that might be a little more introverted, um, uh, you know, if people aren't used to, you know, getting into long conversations or phone calls with you, um, you know, a small gesture from you uh, might mean a, a lot to that that person because you're typically known for not being a that extroverted, but you've uh, reached out to them. Yeah. Uh, now, so it means a lot. We have a great question here from Raleigh. Um, how can people balance prioritizing reaching out and staying connected with uh, taking care of themselves? Uh, so if you're especially struggling in the situation uh, and it might take more energy than you have to be constantly in communication with other people, I think that gets to something you were talking about earlier, Ed. Yeah, that goes back to number one. You can't, you know, you can't pour, pour tea from an empty pot. Um, so you do have to take care of yourself. But I'd also point you to number 10 here on this slide. Um, if you're struggling, call somebody and tell them you're struggling. It's, it's a way of connecting, um, even if you're sort of asking for help rather than offering it. I think these days, uh, if we get a text from somebody that we, that we know or care about um, who says, I you know, I really need to talk. Do you have a few minutes tonight? Most of us are going to respond pretty positively to that. So let's go on to the next. Um, this is a little bit repetitive of things we've already talked about, but just to uh, re remind uh, messages, just how are you holding up uh, uh, is a is a worthwhile thing to text. Um, I think we all have gotten a lot of things through texts or other media uh, in the last two weeks that are um, some are more funny than others. Um, uh, but um, uh, even if it's not that funny, as with the other things, people still appreciate the fact that you're you're reaching out to them. Um, I'm in one group where I've got about 80 emails piled up from a listserv. I'm not going to read them all, but as I say about the New York Times, it's nice to know they're all there. Um, and uh, the video chat ideas that we were talking about earlier, I think there are a lot of interesting ways of using video chat with split screen and play a game together and also be able to see and talk with each other or uh, one student said just having like a study date by video, uh, not necessarily talking, but just have each other on camera and be working and reading and occasionally uh, sharing a comment about a, uh, uh, something humorous in the material or whatever. Um, 
So let's go to the next one, Samantha. So uh, we have some more time here for brainstorming. Uh, what are some of the uh, other ideas that people have for how they can uh, be effective in supporting and helping and encouraging each other? Pat, have we got some things from the chat? Uh, nothing new, but I do want to circle back to a question that came up earlier. Um, mm -hmm. And this question, any thoughts on how to respond to family asking you to come home right now requiring a flight? That's a tough one. Um, and, you know, the, uh, the um, trade-offs uh, there are, are substantial. Um, I... I actually faced that a week ago. We, in my families, we needed to, um, a couple of folks needed to move back home to where, where they're from. And the issue was whether to do it by car or by flight. Uh, they eventually decided to do it by car, driving straight through um, uh, for about 20 hours. Um, I was thinking that flight would have been uh, perhaps uh, a good alternative. Um, I don't know what it's like this week, but last week even first class tickets were relatively inexpensive, so you could um, physically distance pretty well in a first class uh, seat. Um, and I'm told that the airports have done a fairly good job of uh, uh, cleaning cleaning their facilities and, and um, making it so you can go through without having to have a lot of contact with other people or even too many surfaces. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw, throw a flight home out. Um, I haven't looked in a couple of days as, as to whether um, the airlines are still flying many flights or not. I know, I think some of them have cut like half of their flights. Yeah, I think uh, another consideration for, you know, going home uh, to family is whether there are uh, older adults um, at home and uh, whether, you know, they might be willing to take on the risk of, you know, you traveling and, and coming home. But, uh, you know, if that's something for you uh, that you don't want to take the risk of, I think it's important to communicate that. Well, and also by virtue of traveling, if you are exposed to things which you then convey to your older family members. Right. Um, I, th I think preferable to going there if the issue is just wanting to be in contact and, and be able to communicate, uh, I would encourage you to teach them to use Zoom. What, what else? Uh, Yixing shares her personal strategy here. Um, she uh, talks about the high risks of exposure to virus in airports, Ubers, and flights. Um, be patient um, if your family members insist and appreciate that they are caring about you. Right. Yeah, I think that last point is really important. Um, I dealt with that a while ago, not on a flight, but even driving or my parents wanting uh, my husband and I to come back to their, to our hometown um, and thinking that uh, being really firm with them, but also acknowledging that it comes from a place of care and that there are um, also a lot of like cultural factors that go into those um, decisions and those desires. So acknowledging that when people while remaining yeah. firm is really useful. Yeah. We're all wanting to reach out and to connect. Yeah, and I, one, one thing that um, I think we were talking about um, uh, in another meeting um, was to uh, maybe identify folks in your social networks uh, that are living uh, without roommates. Maybe they just have uh, a single apartment. Some of us are fortunate enough to be with family, with our partners, um, or to be at, you know, at home. Um, but other folks that are displaced, um, if they're lucky enough to have a couple of roommates, that's nice. But um, if they're living alone, um, I think they could really, uh, yeah, benefit from someone reaching out to them. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll throw in um, something that one of my friends did this week that I appreciated was she texted one of our group messages in the morning and said, you know, hey everyone, hope you have a good day. At some point today, send like something you learned, something that made you smile and um, maybe like something you're looking forward to in the upcoming week. And so then throughout the day, um, the different people in the chat would, you know, send pictures and reply, and it was a great way to feel connected and get everyone sharing on their own time. Yeah, I think it really is remarkable how resourceful people are being in sharing and connecting. You've all seen on TV uh, vignettes of people in the neighborhood coming out in front of their homes and talking to each other or uh, I saw one where every morning uh, to keep her children on a routine, a mother started a routine of coming out in front of the house and uh, saluting the flag, and now all the neighbors are doing the same thing. Uh, so it's, it's just terrific how people are uh, learning to interact with each other and, or finding, not learning to interact with each other, finding resourceful ways of interacting with each other. And um, I think the key thing is there are going to be people who are struggling. So trying to keep in mind to spread that as much as we can and include as many people as we can in, our, uh, in those we connect with. Shall we go to the next one, Samantha? So this is sort of... Uh, an almost last slide. Uh, where do we go from here? We've talked about ways that we can help each other, ways, resources that we can share, resources that we can use ourselves, um, trying to be sensitive to all the different stressors that people are experiencing with this uh, emergency. Um, how can we go forward? Are there ideas that people have not only for interacting with each other and being being a good friend, but perhaps for organizing together or doing things as groups. Uh, we'd, we'd love to get your your suggestions or, or questions about those those possibilities. Phoebe posted a comment here, but just passing an opportunity challenge to all the STEM folks I know. Um, if you have extra time on your hands to check out uh, a couple of innovation challenges. So Good. she shared, shared a couple of links there that people can look into. Great. Thank you, Phoebe. One of the things we're uh, working on from Peers for Progress and also with Emma and the Mental Health Coalition is trying to develop some ways of uh, training people quickly in being peer supporters over uh, the next couple of weeks to uh, help uh, within their departments or within their um, apartment buildings or whatever situation they're in uh, to, be, to be more helpful uh, to those around them. Um, and we actually have a webinar uh, next next Tuesday night, um, which you'll all get an invitation to uh, that'll cover some of that. I think... Um, I think I was very glad to hear or to read the email from the provost. Uh, I forget whether it was last week or earlier this week, um, uh, saying that they weren't going to require that class time uh, missed by the extra week of spring break be made up, but rather focus on classes and um, uh, uh, courses 
uh, meeting their objectives uh, rather than necessarily counting minutes in class. Um, I think it's very important for people to continue to connect and, and talk with each other and, and be, be part of the conversation in terms of the things that are going on in the university as we all try to finish this semester uh, well in spite of all the challenges we're facing. Um, yeah, I think I, for, go ahead. Yeah, I, th I think for all of us, um, it's, uh, you know, trying to just feel like we're a little bit more con in control of a situation where right. we really don't have much control. Um, and, uh, you know, in a campus community, um, a lot of us, especially the people who has really don't have much power or much say in um, how policies are handled at a, a university or a systems level, um, in a crisis like this, we tend to just follow along with what uh, the authorities, you know, tell us uh, to do. Um, but, you know, as, and it's hard for, for the community to organize um, or to come together when we're not physically together, when we're uh, uh, isolated. So I, it's a, I think a good time for all of us to think about uh, what would we like the university and what would we like them to to improve on and to do better. Um, if we approve of, you know, things that they're, uh, you know, policies that they're doing, uh, that's great, but what can they they be doing better for us? Yeah. And I would just add on that, Pat, that um, I think everybody, at least that I encounter, gets it that we all need to cut each other a little slack. Um, and I think, I, I can't speak for other departments and other schools on campus, uh, but I think most of faculty, if, if a student says, I'm not sure you're aware of this, but a number of us are really struggling with the following, is there some way that maybe there could be an accommodation? I think most faculty would be really open to that. Um, so, uh, don't don't be bashful. Reach out and speak up. I guess maybe that's the catchword for um, the whole thing. Don't be bashful. Connect. Reach out. Find talk to other people, and uh, speak up if you need to. Uh, Nicola shared something. Actually, I think that will be interesting to you, Ed. Um, and maybe you already know about this. Uh, he says that Google has digitized some museum exhibits from famous museums, and the uh, Met streams uh, performances now. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, both the Met and the Berlin Opera are streaming performances. But um, I think there was also a question or something about if faculty isn't open to being flexible, you can reach out to the office dean of students. Yeah, great. That's a good one. Or <clears throat> reach out to the department chair. Um, I think no nobody is going to get slammed for um, making a mistake these days. We're all recognizing we're all going to make mistakes, and what we want to do is is get through the semester with it, with all of our students being able to achieve their objectives. Alrighty, Pat, are there any last closing comments from the chat section? No, I think, uh, I think we're good. Thank you so much to everybody for uh, being so um, engaged tonight. And thank you for sending all of your uh, resources and, and tips. And we're, we're going to collect all of these and, uh, and, and keep a, add that to our list of resources. Right. Yeah, definitely. And, and please, <clears throat> our emails are here. If you want to uh, connect with any of us individually, feel free. Um, and uh, 
we really appreciate your time and your good suggestions and good questions. And uh, hopefully we can spread this more broadly and, and help more people at the university with all of your good suggestions uh, be, be more effective friends in, in all their lives. Um, this, this is a community endeavor, it's not a lecture. Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, like Ed said, contact us if you'd like. Um, we really appreciate you attending this webinar. Um, we'll be hosting some other ones in the future. So, uh, but for today, we are going to um, shut it down for the evening. Y'all have a really good night. Um, and we hope that you and your families and friends are staying safe um, and connected. Take care, everybody. Bye. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for joining.